Uh, you know, since the recession hit in 2009, a good deal of what we have focused on as part of our objectives is to help existing businesses prosper and succeed. And, and so I included in your report today just sort of a two-year look at enterprise zones as one of the things that you and the Jackson County Commission have put in place, uh, Medford Zone, Jackson County Zone, to help uh, particularly our existing businesses make new investments and create new employment opportunities. And as the report indicates, uh, those 15 businesses over a two-year period of time have invested just a little over $63 million and have pledged to create at least 277 jobs. That's just the minimum that they're obligated to provide. Uh, substantial investment and uh, I did some simple math on that. It looks at just under $10 million of new earned income that's added to our economy. And if you're, you're an economist, you'd, you'd easily calculate that that, would, that will spin it within the regional economy three to four times, maybe five times, uh, and generate a great deal more input in the economy. Um, so it is, we also do, uh, do lending to small businesses. In the last two years, uh, we've made loans to, to, uh, to 13 businesses. Uh, they've used those funds to make either startups or expansions. Uh, projects that when you total up the, their total investment was a little over $2 million and their, their, their indications are that they're creating 61 new jobs with those investments. The third sort of leg of our, our uh, strategy toward the economy is to help the, the entrepreneurs that exist within our community who are contemplating or considering launching a new business. Uh, each Wednesday, and you know, it, it, you should come by the office sometime on a Wednesday and watch all the enthusiasm that the entrepreneurs have as they come and sit down with our volunteers from our technical assistance group, which are people who volunteer their time to make it make them more successful. Um, and we're really get working to uh, improve the flow of entrepreneurs from idea stage to actual launch and success stage. And as uh, many of you know, we we have a very very strong and active Southern Oregon Angel Network group here in Southern Oregon. And after several years of holding events, sort of a singular investment opportunity for entrepreneurs, they've shifted their focus. They now are ready to, to entertain and review a, a, an entrepreneurial proposal at any point in time. Our, our objective for our work in this area is to make them investment ready so that more of them can actually make that business jump and be successful. So with that, I think I'm going to leave the rest of the conversation with you to Colleen Johnston and she'll tell you a little about what we're doing uh, in terms of new efforts and new activities in relationship to the business rec recruitment aspect of uh, our, our sorority mission. So, and I'll stick around for if there's any questions uh, following Colleen's presentation. Good afternoon, council, mayor, and staff. Thank you, Ron. I did bring a prop. For those of you who are not at our Southern Oregon Business Conference, that's part of our Southern Oregon Edge campaign. This is my second prop. So what you see down there is something that eventually we hope with the Southern Oregon Edge campaign, which just a quick summary is to profile local businesses in both counties and raise the awareness and use that as a leverage to attract more companies to the region because they want to know who else is already doing business here and why. So that's the, really the premise behind that campaign. So what you see there is really kind of um, a visual representation of what we hope will eventually be seen at the airport with a variety of those um, representing companies from all over the region. We're not there yet. That's a discussion that will happen with the Director uh, Byrne Case. And what I have in my uh, hands here, this is a company right here in Medford also, Coding Zeal, two years old. They were a presenter at our Southern Oregon Business Conference. Um, this is just a visual representation of uh, kind of a two-page flyer that we have ready to send out to companies as part of proposals. And this is actually the photo you'll see if you go visit the website, Southern Oregon Edge, Dot com and you can read their story firsthand. I'm going to be giving this to uh, Mr. Hope today, my partner in economic development, um, because uh, any of these that you would like that are a Medford company, we are happy to provide these to you for display wherever you think would be appropriate, Bill. So with the Southern Oregon Edge campaign, uh, more focus on my job is going to be actually going out and uh, recruiting companies. So I can give you a report real quickly. Already this year we've attended two trade shows. One was last week in Anaheim, the medical design and manufacturing show. 
it was not just me, it was 10 other economic development professionals from all over the state of Oregon. So we go as a team promoting Oregon, walk the show, we held a reception at McCormick and Schmitz for our Oregon companies and others as well. We also had a lead generation firm that set up outside appointments for us to go visit of companies that had expressed some interest in expanding to Oregon. So all of us uh, participated in those calls as well. Um, the other show was in January. It was the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. I actually attended that show with one of our companies based in uh, Josephine County. Um, it was an overwhelming show, but I did come back with a few leads from that show that I am following up on now. So that's really my task is to to find ways to attract companies to the region, um, develop a relationship with them, court them, and continue to provide information as they are ready to hear about Southern Oregon. And I can tell you that right now we have three very specific projects that are fairly active looking at properties in Medford. We give them code names, and if you want to know the code name, it's MDM. Project Duck and Project Partition. So they are all looking specifically at properties that are right here in the city of Medford. There are other projects that we're courting also that are a little bit more long term. Other things I would just mention is that uh, we do also work very closely with our brokers and developers. It's a very critical component because if we don't have a facility, for a company looking, then we really don't have much to offer. And so we're working with them to be sure we know what our inventory is and where our lack of inventory is that maybe we can um, explore other options. And I think that is all I have right now. I would uh, entertain any questions if there is one. Colleen, thank you very much, Ron. Thank you, too. Good, good presentation. Questions for either? Yes, Mr. Corcoran. Mm. Edge campaign. I know that you've been, what, a year and a half, two years now putting this together from the ground up? It's about 18 months in since the idea was conceived. Found and scratched out on a napkin. That's right, on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> um, this and the site consultant tours that you stage every summer, I think, are just huge steps forward. And I hope the public realize how much time it takes for these things to go from a concept to reality and then uh, hopefully the concluding company relocating here. I mean, it's long odds. But from a policy standpoint, is there anything that you hear that we can address that gets in the way of these companies coming here? Um, it might be street fees. It might be some other regulatory burden or hurdle. Is there something that's synonymous that you have heard more than once that this body could take a look at to uh, make things easier for you? Well, that's or a very good question. Thank you, Counselor. Um, most of the comments we get, first of all, with the company considering um, this area, they want to know what the workforce is. That's the number one concern is do we have the right workforce to meet their needs? And so Ron is engaged in many efforts related to workforce. So, and we have other partners on that. That's the number one concern. Then it is really, do you have a building that's gonna fit what I need? We have to have something to show them just to get them here. And I would say that, and Ron may concur that um, one of our challenges here and in Josephine County is that we just don't have a, a big inventory of larger buildings. Bill and I have been working on a project I call Project Blender that um, they need 50 to 100,000 square feet and it's hard to find that I just showed some property before coming here today and it was in really bad repair. It's just not going to work for them. It doesn't have sprinklers. I mean, there's all these things. So I think one thing that we can work on, and Ron has mentioned it before, is trying to develop another more inventory or a virtual building program in which we do have something ready to go that's pretty much a shell that can be up in shorter time frame because we've already gone through some of the pre-planning engineering processes. We did that before, many years ago, with what is and uh, was formerly the CDS publication building out on Joseph Way. Um, that started out as a virtual building and then it got built. So that would be one thing, is just to have more plans out there, working with our developers and with the various jurisdictions to make that happen so that when you come and you want to have your business here, 
we can say we have this, it could be up in six months or nine months, whatever the time frame is. Well, I know city administration and staff have made a number of changes in the planning process that are designed to expedite the process. I just hit you cold with that question, and as you both think about it, as you go along or you encounter something, please don't hesitate. I know that you won't. I know you have wonderful communications with Mr. Ho, but that this body can act on it as soon as possible because we don't want to get in the way of economic development. We want to facilitate it. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Swanson. I'll just mention in that arena, I know I've been involved with other economic development programs, and sometimes it's a pretty long reach, but looking at spec buildings has also been part of what other communities have done, economic development groups have done um, to try to, to, to but it, you know, it takes a lot of um, a lot of time to put together and you have to sit on the property for a while, which makes people anxious. So it, it's just something that takes a lot of time to, uh, to develop and, and move forward, but it is something that I've seen uh, has a, had a positive impact. Ron? Mayor, Mayor, just one last uh, Please, uh, you bet. It's on, your, on the sheet I gave you, but uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we held uh, Sarwini's annual meeting in Grants Pass, and we took advantage of the wonderful venue that uh, Hellgate Excursions provides with their jet boat rides down to OK Corral. And kind of, and honestly, through popular demand, we've been asked that we consider going back again, and we're going to do that this year, and we're going to make it even more exciting. Uh, we've. Yeah, I think we are there now. We have eff effectively sold out the venue for Friday, uh, June the 19th, uh, for a Soretti annual annual event at uh, uh, OK Corral, which, again, if those of you who haven't been there, it's a wonderful facility right on the river. Uh, but we're going to use it as a trade show or a display of the outdoor recreational businesses uh, that make up a significant portion of the uh, economy here. So we'll probably have some boat manufacturers. We have a zip line company that we're... That we, we may ultimately get a zip line for that event. Um, so we're going to make it our annual meeting, but it's, gonna, it's also going to highlight. And so after that annual meeting, I would expect you'll see some of these business profiles that will be on our Southern Oregon edge, and they will represent some of the exciting outdoor recreational type businesses, whether it's a built manufacturing, we have all kinds of companies that, that cater to that sector, and we're going to use those to uh, convince others to join us in, in this beautiful region of the state. So I thank you very much for your for your support, and I appreciate the opportunity to give you this quarterly update. It's nice to be able to let people know how much hard work that Colleen and Alex and Mary Beth are doing. Well, I know how much the city manager is looking forward to a return opportunity to ride the jet boats, and this time he won't have the crutches with him that he had last <laughs> yeah. time, which somewhat hindered we wait, his We waited two years for him to fully yeah, there you go. ride it back. Yeah. Mr. Stein, you had a question? Uh, yeah, you mentioned workforce. Is there any um, integration with the colleges in the area? So, you know, the businesses here, you know, I kind of I kind of say I want, I would like a system where you graduate on Friday and start work on Monday, you know, to, to ensure that our, you know, students here that are now educated are getting the right education that businesses are looking for. Yeah, Mayor and Councillor Stein, I, I, well, first of all, absolutely yes, and I have to sort of make a public declaration. I am a, an elected board member of the Rogue Community College, so I have sort of bring the, the economic development market demand perspectives to that, to that activity, but there's a great deal of work being done. Um, you know, the community college has an example, which is sort of the more immediate employment readiness opportunity. Uh, college, university uh, takes a little bit longer, but uh, Rogue is working on a tech uh, uh, tech education component at their White City facility. They hope to have that up maybe later in 2000, uh, next year, uh, into 2016. Uh, and that will really address what we have heard and what we know to be the needs of our employers in this region. Um, you know, uh, for many of you may have attended our uh, business conference on January the 29th. We had a wonderful presentation by uh, the lady from uh, the Milken Institute, uh, Manoli Ratnatunga. And uh, in that in that event, uh, she pointed out that that the Jackson County area uh, ranks sixth among the smaller size metropolitan communities in the United States for the depth and breadth of our high technology business sector. That's not a sector that I think most people would speak out and say that's what we are known for. But that's one of the that's one of the reasons that the community college is pursuing that. 
and then in addition to that, between uh, so the Oregon University's curriculum and its opportunities, and OIT, Oregon Tech and Klamath Falls, which is frankly one of uh, the best tech and engineering schools available in the United States, we we have the great we have the resources. We we need to work more consistently and collaboratively to get more students into those type of programs. Um, and get them ready for the employment opportunities that really exist here in the region. We hear a lot about uh, brain drain and so on, but frankly, uh, uh, if it wasn't for people moving here and taking out some of these jobs, we would be in a uh, very difficult situation. Getting students uh, interested, uh, where? Um, uh, one, of my, one of the ideas that we're working on right now, we've had industry tours for a number of years where we took members of our organization out to see the businesses that we work on a regular basis. We want to twist that a little bit, and we're hoping that we can uh, convince some of our private members to help support an effort where each business person attending the, that industry tour would be the show, would, would invite and, 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 and sort of show for a, an educator, one of the teachers or counselors from our school systems that will get them more fully aware of and knowledgeable about the career opportunities that exist among our creative businesses in this region. So, yes. I just wanted to add to that that RCC has a customized training program. So we've been working with a project called Project Taylor. It's on hold right now, but it would essentially be 500 jobs. And so they are very interested in a customized training, you know, like a six-week period or something, so that they can ramp up those employees very quickly. And Rogue Community College was at those meetings with us. Um, when the company visited. So we're on the short list of three communities, but it is on hold for one year of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for either Ron or Pauline? Thanks very much. Good presentation. Appreciate it.